Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Winter is just as wonderful a time of the year as spring, summer, and fall. The beauty of the snow as it drapes the quiet pines, the crisp cold on a clear day, the pureness of the air after a snowfall, and then, of course, the winter sports. Most winter sports are speed demons. They're just the thing for folks and young people who crave dashing down a toboggan slide or zipping down a mountainside on skis at breakneck speed. But there's one winter sport that requires great patience and dressing in heavy and warm clothing... This sport is ice fishing, and it attracts hundreds of enthusiasts every year. Let's put a handle on this story. We'll call it Ten Fathoms Deep. <laughs> Say, look at the crowd for the ice festival. The crowd is right. More and more folks seem to come out each year for this event. Oh, you speak truth there. Maybe they make uh, better red flannels now, and people not afraid of cold. <laughs> <laughs> I think you hit the nail on the head, Gray Wolf. I see over at the department store that they've got some newfangled insulated suits out now that are supposed to keep you warm as toes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Bill bought a couple of those suits for you to wear, Stumpy. <laughs> he did. Well, what you, you red blooded young fellow like me need them special suits for? You think I was old the way you talk? Why, that's like having a blanket wrapped around you. I ain't gonna wear it. Stuffy, you always talk about aching bones. Huh? Maybe I do, so what? You young whippersnappers talk like I was feeble and ready for a chair by the stove. Well, aren't you? Now you see here, Henry Scott. I'll tan your hide with one hand tied behind my back. <laughs> You'd think I was like that feller that cut himself and didn't bleed for three days after. Uh, why not? Tired blood. Uh, oh. <laughs> that ought to make you set up and take notice. Henry's just teasing you, old timer. I ordered the special insulated suits for all the rangers. Very good, light and real warm. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? I'll wear it if you fellers will. Mine come in handy when the ice fishing contest starts. Oh, there are trumpets for a festival to open. Let's go over and find out who they've elected as queen of the festival, huh? Yeah, maybe it's someone I know. <laughs> like uh, Susan Thompson, perhaps, Henry? Oh, cut it out. Just because I've dated her a few times doesn't mean I got a crush on her. No, that's true. Uh, let's say you got a light crush on her. Huh? <laughs> Come on, let's go and find out who won. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Naughty Pine Ice Festival. We're thrilled and pleased to have such a large attendance at this occasion, which is the winter sporting event of the year. All of the contests and the prizes are posted on every pillar and post we could find, so everyone will have ample time to read them and enter the contests. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's a mighty great pleasure to introduce the Queen of the Ice Festival, Miss Susan Thompson. Yeah. Ms. Thompson has asked Mr. Henry Scott to be her escort after she's crowned the queen. <laughs> You'd better rush home and put on your best Sunday go to meet and clothes, sonny. Uh, what are you blushing about, pal? Well, this way, you see. That is... <laughs> <laughs> go out and get out of here before your tag gets all tungled up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You don't want to keep the queen waiting, do you? See you later, fellas. Sure. 
We'll be around after you come down out of the clouds. Have a good time, pal. Yep. Give the queen a kiss for me. On the hand, that is. <laughs> Good afternoon, Bill. Good day to you, Mayor. Have a chair, Bill, and uh, we'll chat about the festival. Fine. Uh, here are the lists of contestants and the time schedules of the different events and uh, where they're to take place. Thank you. Bill, I know we'll have another accident-free festival again this year, like we've had in past years, since uh, you've had charge of the safety end of this affair. Well, thank you, Mayor. I'm sure not all the folks in Naughty Pine feel as you do, though. Oh, of course they do. Oh, perhaps on the surface they complain, but uh, deep down inside they know that these accident-free festivals are good publicity. This is evident by the bigger crowds to the festival each year. Uh, perhaps you're right. We'll do our best to make this another accident-free year, Your Honor. Well, I know you will. And uh, thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to help us. Uh, you're welcome. Good day, sir. All right, men. Let's come to order. <coughs> Thank you. Now, here are your assignments for the ice festival contests. Tom? Yes, sir. You, Fletch, and Ollie will cover the bobsled racing and the ski meet. Frank? Right here, Bill. You, Floyd, Mike, Sam, and Big Red will cover the ice boat racing, the sail skating, and ice skating. Stumpy, Gray Wolf, and I will cover the ice fishing the curling contest, the ice cutting, and the ice sculpturing. All right, that's it, men. You know the safety rules we've set up. Enforce them strictly and without hesitation. You may save a life and most surely an accident. You're dismissed. Well, Sonny here is hoping everything goes without some knucklehead risking his neck to show off. Oh, that's right, old-timer. But it's our job to stop him. <laughs> Too bad we can't read minds and we can stop it before it starts. Now we got to do it the hard way. That's right. But it's not a bad job. Our satisfaction is helping the folks at the festival have a good time safely. We'll drive out to Goose Lake in the morning and have a look at the ice. <laughs> Beautiful winter's day. Sun shining bright. It's not too cold. Ah, perfect day. <laughs> what was that thing that passed us? The Fireball Express? That hot rod's doing 90. Or I'll eat my shirt. And it's overloaded with kids. We're going to stop them. Don't put your arm out the window or we'll fly. May not stop. Hold on. I'm going to kick in the supercharger and the emergency speed gear. That's it! They're stopping! Stumpy, radio for a car to take the driver to jail. I suppose you're going to ask me where the fire is, huh, Copper? Hey, Stu, that guy ain't no hick cop. He's a fed. Keep your yap shut, Ben. I know what I'm doing. What's the trouble, Buffalo Bill? Get out of that car. Why? Get out. Listen, you can't talk to me like I'll that. I'll just reach right in this window and... Hey, look to me. My dad's a big man in Junction City. He'll get you fired for this. Listen, Sonny boy. Either you open the door and step out, or I'll finish pulling you through the window. You understand? Stu, you're crazy. Do what the guy says. Okay, Ranger. You win. I'll come out. Through the door, if you don't mind. Hello, 
Pat. Hello, Bill. Uh, is this the young rough Nick? Yeah. Book him on reckless driving, refusing to yield right of way to an emergency vehicle, exceeding the speed limit by 40 miles an hour. Mm, a jet pilot, maybe. Yeah, but not an automobile driver. Anything else? There's more. Insolence to an officer, overloading his car with passengers, and driving faster than the condition of his car permits. That ain't so. That's a hot rod. That's a piece of junk, son. I've seen hot rods, lots of them, and they're safe. Yours isn't. Mm, you speak truth there. Take him in, Pat. Come along, young feller, and mind your manners, or I'll add a few things to this fine list myself. You can't do this to me. My father will hear about this. That's right, son. He'll hear about it from the judge. My father will show you, boss. I want to explain to the rest of you young people why I arrested your friend. You don't have to, officer. We know. We heard what you told the deputy. There's more than that to it, son. First of all, we're proud of our safety record for the past several years, especially during this ice festival. We haven't had an accident. Not one. Honest? Honest. You know why? I'll tell you. It's because we've enforced safety. That's why I'm locking up your friend. Anyone who would pull what he's just pulled is dangerous to everyone. He doesn't have sense enough to come in out of the rain. Why... He's worse than a man with a gun. He wasn't driving this car. He was aiming it. Goose Lake looks pretty as a picture today. That's sure is, Stubby. It's pretty cold, long time now. I should be safe enough. Yeah, it should. Well, we better bore a few holes and test it. I'm not right. Let's try out there. Uh, let me have the auger, Claywell. Uh, I bore a hole. Maybe I catch fish, too. <laughs> now that would be something. You might just bore him to death. <laughs> Well, that does it, fellas. We've taken a dozen thickness tests. And the ice is in good shape for the fishermen to have their contest. Ah, not a real exciting sport, too. I guess it is to some fellas, but not to me. Of course, I don't hold much to fish and know how I can sit still that long. But good sport, Stumpy. It easy on nerves and takes skill. Also, men get fresh air and sunshine. And sometimes rain. <laughs> That's true. Well, here comes Marv Gaines. Hello, Marv. Where are you going with your golf shoes on? Hello, Stumpy, Bill, Gray Wolf. Well, I'm wearing my golf shoes so I don't slip and break the ice. <laughs> don't worry about that. The ice tests out good, solid strength. Oh, sure. Anybody knows that the ice is safe after all the near zero and below zero weather we've been having. Uh, but you fellas have to make a big project out of it. It's better to be safe than sorry, Marv. I've seen the undercurrent in these mountain lakes cut the ice paper thin in spite of all the cold weather. Sure, I know you fellas have to uphold your reputation of doing a thorough job, but uh, I think you overdo it. Oh, you know, to sort of make a good impression on all the visitors that we have here during the festival. No, you listen here, you young maverick. Uh, Stumpy, you're not letting him work you up. You just try and get our goat. That's right, isn't it, Marv? Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, I suppose you're going to be real tough about watching how many people stand in one spot on the ice, too, uh, like you were last year, eh? Huh? Uh, Marv, uh, let me make a suggestion. Sure, go ahead. You run the festival, and we'll take care of the safety end of it, huh? We don't tell you what to do, nor do we needle you about it. We'd appreciate you doing the same for us. <laughs> Well, if that's the way you fellas want it, uh, I mean, you know, no need to get in a huff about it. I was only joking. Yeah, I know. I laugh till my sides ache. I think you fellas are just a bunch of soreheads. <laughs> How do you like that young whippersnapper? As soon as the shoe's on his foot, he thinks everybody's getting up into a huff. Marv, meanwhile, may not have a good sense of humor. I'm afraid I don't either. When a festival official ribs us about safety precautions, 
We can expect it from the contestants and visitors, but not from the officials. Mark could be the first one to raise a storm if there was an accident. His kind of humor isn't funny. Well, Henry, why aren't you on your job escorting the queen? Hi, fellas. Excuse me while I finish this soda, will you? How are things going? Just fine, pal. I say, slurping is out with the Queen's escort. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> oh, say, listen, that's not a bad deal. I get to see all of the events from a first-class spot, and, and then, of course, I have Susan's company without dispute. <laughs> is that right? You mean you have to fight them off otherwise? Yeah, sort of. Oh, come on, pal. Who are you trying to fool? Susan's had her eye on you for a long time. <laughs> you said it, sonny. Now she's finally getting her hooks into him so she can keep a good hold. Oh, she isn't either. We're just good friends. <laughs> oh, well, that's what all men say, Henry. I, I hear the same kind of story before. You said it, Grey Wolf. We're just good friends. <laughs> then Polly. <laughs> she lowers the sandbag full of love bugs and he's badly bitten and trapped. And he's so young, too. Oh, poor Henry. <laughs> that isn't the way it is at all. Oh, excuse me, my dear prince. If you'll just look through the window, your queen is waiting for you. Oh, well, I'll have to run along. See you fellas later. Okay, pal. Well, that's all we see of Henry for the rest of the day now. Yeah. He's going out with his close friend. <laughs> close friend, my foot. any need of going over the contest rules since each one of you has a printed copy. But before you begin fishing, I want to introduce the man who's in charge of keeping this festival safe and accident-free. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Ranger Bill Jefferson. Thank you. Folks, as you all know, there hasn't been an accident at the festival for several years running. This fine record is credit to each and every one of you, because everyone has observed the safety precautions that we feel necessary. Let's make this festival another accident-free occasion. We'll have a much better time if it is. Now, for those of you who are here for the first time, I want to say that we'll enforce the law if you choose to break it. There's already been one arrest, and there'll be more if anyone decides he doesn't have to obey the safety rules. We can't allow one or more persons to jeopardize the well-being of the whole crowd. That's all I have to say. And good fishing. You kind of took the wind out of their enthusiasm, Bill. Oh, I don't think so, Marv. Just made them stop and think. Not right, Marv. When people not think, then accidents happen. Well, maybe you're right, but I don't think you had to tell them that you've already made a pinch. Well, what would you do, Marvin, my boy? You wait till somebody gets hurt and then make them stop and use their thinking cap? No, of course not. But I don't think you need to lay it on so thick. I mean, after all, these people are adults in the contest. You're right, Marv. But even adults get carried away with enthusiasm when they're in a crowd. Let's circulate around and see how the fishing's coming along. I oh, like a good idea. Maybe we see first big fish caught. How's it going, boys? Okay, Ranger. Look, I got the bait on the hook without putting the hook in my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Catch anything yet, Luke? Nope, not yet, Stumpy. And I didn't fall through the hole in the ice. <laughs> See there? My feet ain't froze yet. <laughs> hey, you catch fish. 
flag just go up. Hey, you're right. Maybe this will be the winner. Ah, be careful how you handle fish. We not want accidents. Say, Barney, you got the stove too hot. Sorry. We're just trying to keep warm, not burn to death, Bill. Hey, fellas, I caught my first one. Look at the size of it. <laughs> it's a whopper, all right. Now watch out for the hole or you'll be the second one. Man, this is delicious stew. Well, thanks, Bill. It isn't fancy, but it'll stick to your ribs, and that's what these fellas need after they've been out there on the ice hour after hour. Right. And warm them up, too. Bill... Do you fellas have to walk around all the time to make sure that everyone's behaving himself? No, we do that so we'll be among the contestants in case something happens. Mm-hmm. But I still say that you fellas do your job too well. I hope we do, Marv. Look over there. Somebody bring truck on ice. Huh? Let's go, boys. This ice isn't that strong. Everybody off this truck and hurry it up. What do you mean, get off? I'm taking these folks out to the center to see the deep fishing. Oh, no, you're not, Mac. This ice won't hold the truck. Now get them off right now. Uh, all right. But I think you're talking through your hat. You'll have to get off, folks. The ranger says so. <laughs> Move along now, folks. There's too much weight on this ice already. I suppose you're going to tell me I'm going to have to move the truck now, too. That's right. Back it slowly off the ice and step on it. Well, you, you fellas are real killjoys, you know. I'm going to talk to Marv about this. Talk to anyone you wish, but move the truck and move it right now. If the ice begins to crack, you'll lose your truck in ten fathoms of water. Oh, now, who ever heard of the ice breaking when it's this cold? I'm moving the truck, but not because I think I should. Because I just don't want to fight with the law. That's... Thank you. You should know better than this, Mac. I should, huh? Well, uh, we'll see about that. You haven't heard the end of this yet. <laughs> oh, my whole breath on that one. I strong enough for cars but not for truck. Yep. Especially a truck loaded to the gunnels with people. How are things going up there, Tom? Just fine, Bill. Everyone's being careful and taking proper precautions to play it safe on this high-speed course. That's fine. Keep up the good work and report to me at 4 o'clock. Okay, Bill. Over and out. Over and out. Frank, are you there? Where else, Chief? <laughs> okay. Any accidents? No, not yet. Everyone's trying to cooperate. The ice boating and sail, uh, sail skating is just about over, so the high-speed danger is almost past. Well, keep a sharp eye and report at 4 o'clock. Over and out. Right. Over and out. So far, so good. Yeah. I hope it stays that way. We've only got a few hours to go, and we can add another no-accident record year. You'd better tell those rangers where to head in. Who does Bill think he is, anyhow? Well, I appreciate how you feel, Mac, but Bill's only doing the job that he's been asked to do. And I know the mayor and the council would be very unhappy if we had an accident. Yeah, but you know the ice is strong enough. Well, who ever heard of the ice giving way at this time of the year when it's been so cold? Well, you're right. Bill does a good job, but it's... Well, that's so good he bothers folks. Well, however, I think you should stay off the ice with the truck. Oh, you know better than that. Well, how about, how about you talking to Mr. Strong Arm of the Law and telling him to lay off? Okay, Mac, I'll see what I can do. My, 
aren't you just wasting your breath as far as Mac and his truck is concerned? Well, I knew what your Bill, attitude... Bill, Mac has truck back on ice. It looked like he tried to get away fast. What? Well, the ice is breaking up. Get ropes. Let's go. Oh, no, they'll drown. Marv, call the pole motor and ambulance. <laughs> Get the passengers off the truck. Some of you men, get these ropes over to those people and pull them onto the good ice. Come on, you guys. Let's keep going. Mac, Mac stuck in cab. Ice jammed door shut. You'll have to get out through the window. You and Stumpy, get him out, Gray Wolf. Get your head and shoulders out the window, Mac. Oh, hurry up. This thing's going down like a rock any time. Pull still. Good job. Get rope under arms, Mac. She's going down. Pull, Gray Wolf. I pull. That's it. I pull hard. A little more. I made it. I made it. Hey, Gray Wolf. Look what we pulled out of the drink. Uh, we make big hole in ice. We should get big fish. Hey, you guys cut it out? I'm freezing to death. Yep. Maybe a little freezing will wake up your common sense. Let's get him out and take him to the ambulance so he can warm up. <laughs> Mac, this will warm you up. Thanks, Stumpy. How are the rest of people, Bill? Everyone's all right. They'll be taken back to town for dry clothes and general warming up. Oh, Mac, you got dunked all the way. How are you? Oh, I guess I'm all right. If I can only stop shivering. Well, you'll be all right. Bill, I'm... I'm sorry I didn't listen. I guess I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Well, the record has to be broken because, because of me. Yeah, we'll have to mark this down as an accident. But no lives were lost and no one was seriously hurt. But you lost your truck. He sure did. And it's going to take some fishing to pull that out of ten fathoms of water. In fact, that'll be the prize fish of the festival. <laughs> Well, I guess we can laugh since no one was hurt. Biff Smith will bring his huge wrecking truck out and pull Mac's truck out of the lake and everything will be all right. But it just goes to show that a person should listen to those who know the facts. We said the ice wasn't strong because we tested it. It's always better to play it safe than to have to be sorry. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... <laughs> 